and, and outreach. But I mean, we, we, we have to be patient about all of this. And again, I make the point that we have to be measured because we are here trying to convince a very large constituency that there is worth in us being here. And, and that's why we, we do not seek to exaggerate uh, the frustrations or the difficulties, because as I said before, they're not a test of us. We, we understand that it's a mighty endeavour to get the British government to face up to its responsibilities in relation to unionism and to be part of the collective role of getting the unionist leaderships to face up to the reality that we're not going back to second class citizenship and those that we represent are not going back to the type of status which was inflicted upon us and our grandparents and our great grandparents for generations. So that's, that's part of the uh, Rubicon which unionism has to has to cross, and unfortunately its leaderships have yet to cross that Rubicon. Well, what did you say when he called you this? In a corridor, was it around the table? What state was that made yesterday to you? Uh, it was made uh, yesterday in, in, uh, during an adjournment. Did you attempt to speak to him and that was his response? Yes. As, what was your response? My response was simply to expect more from him and to hope that in the fullness of time that, that he will rise above whatever other primitive instincts he has. I mean, we have to understand that in many ways the unionist, if I can say so, in resisting change uh, and in refusing to face up to the change, perhaps are afraid of change. And without patronising them and without in any way uh, being provocative, that's a challenge for us. It's up to us to assure them that their best future is on the island of Ireland with the rest of us.